Hello, Zero K fans, and welcome to the June 2018 1v1 tournament. I'm your host, Dominic, and a little bit late start, but we are going to be getting into round one, actually. Going to be FFC versus Orphilius. Going to get into it immediately, because, again, a little bit late on this, so... We have Doom Patrol, FFC, or Orphilius versus FFC. I guess it was a clan tag, now it's just their name. We have Orphilius going for the Ampbot Factory, FFC going for the Jumpbot Factory, which on Doom Patrol is an interesting choice, because Doom Patrol, as you can tell, has some water in the middle. Ampbot Factory makes a lot of sense, Jumpbot Factory makes some sense, bots are fine. Vehicles are the one thing I wouldn't expect to see, and indeed we don't. At any rate, that thus far, Orphilius with a slight economic advantage going in, but overall, everything's just kind of yeah, set up. Fairly evenly. Neither player has really commanded any lead that really gets in the way of anyone else. FFC is going for the center, and they will be able to maintain that, well, reasonably well, I would say. They can use that to leverage into another four, another six metal, actually ten metal, potentially. That's going to be a huge boon for them. Orphelius has expanded fairly safely. They do have their, they do have everything up for Lotuses, just for a little bit of extra defense. At the same time, FFC, not so much. Very negative to their expansions. Orphelius basically cannot be let out from under this pressure that FFC is applying to them. Otherwise, Orphelius will be able to start completely destroying FFC's base. So, we'll see how that goes. But at this point, FFC is doing a great job just making sure Orphelius is on the back foot and is forced to maintain their own base. See, FFC, wow, taking the front side of the... Really taking the near side of the beach, not even going for the back side yet. In fact, I don't see any builders at all. There was a constable coming up here, but none that are really trying to set up over here. Which I'm a little surprised by. I realize Orphelius could flank around this and hit around the back. But right now, FSC has so much control over the map that I don't actually expect Orphelius to do that for the simple reason that they have almost no reason to. So yeah, FFC is having a pretty easy time getting this whole game going in their favor. The moderators especially. This is a thing that jump bots have I mean, had for a while. Moderators, great long-range sniping skirmishing unit. And that alone, pushing Orphelius out of here immediately. So losing what I think was game one, I'm, like I said, a little bit late here, unfortunately, so I'm not entirely sure which game is which, but it will be a question of whether this is meant to be best of one or more. So I'll be back in a sec once I manage to sort that out. Unfortunately, I don't have brackets at the moment. It's a bit annoying. I'm afraid, I, yeah, it's, sometimes don't always get the brackets immediately. My apologies on that one. But hopefully we can figure out what is going on. Ah, we have a bracket. Okay, so I was wrong. Beautifully so. Anyway, as I was saying, yeah, so... Oops. So anyway, little bracket. Should be able to get that. Oh, for crying out loud, why didn't, can't you... Ugh. <sighs> My apologies. Zero K's chat is sometimes a little bad for links. Why can't I get... Whatever. Sorry about this. I will have to be a sec. I'll be back in like two seconds with proper brackets and everything else. Stay tuned. The tournament will be resuming in a sec. Probably with round two. Welcome back, Zero K fans, to the 2018, June 2018 1v1 tournament. And we finally have the brackets now, so FSC and Orphelius, that one for FSC. We are in round one of the Swiss. We're going to be moving on to a match that is currently in progress between Major Obvious and Unlucky. And that is, again, on Doom Patrol. That is the entire round one of this game is going to be on Doom Patrol. So, all things going well, we should be able to see a pretty good match. It has been going on for about eight minutes as I jump into it now, so we will be, again, getting that bit of a fast-forward effect, as often happens. Yeah, at this point, again, we have... Okay, Cloaky versus Hover. Much Oh, Hover! Hover we've not seen in a long time! That is exciting. So, unlucky going for Hovercraft Factory. Going for, apparently, a lot of early maces. A lot of early maces and scalpels. Same time, Major Obvious with the Cloakies with the Rockos. Very good choice, generally, against Hover. But the Halberds coming in there, doing their job. Halberds being highly protected when they're not firing means they can easily get into those Rockos. Not to worry at all about the fact that Skirmishes have long range. Still, though, unlucky... Actually able to handle themselves pretty well as far as economy goes. Both players very even on, on economy. Major obvious actually getting slightly behind. Looks like they had more primarily born on reclaim. For a while they had more even economy. They don't now. And the dagger's coming in here for unlucky. I'm not sure I totally agree with. 
I mean, I like the idea just as a you know, raider versus skirmisher generally makes sense against the glaives is working out really well as well. But considering how many Rockos there are, I feel like the halberds were doing a much more efficient job. However, we are seeing exactly what will happen here as more daggers do pull in. Major Obvious should be likely losing these Rockos. They will be. These Rockos are way too clumped and the daggers going to have a field day as a result. And the Rockos cannot find much. They are finding a few hits here and there on the daggers, but nowhere near enough to actually cause major problems. While at the same time, Unlucky is able to leverage that into securing this expansion over here. Again, the Stinger built up the Penetrator as well, also helping secure the expansion, which is super handy. Yeah, overall, even that that Iris not finding anything to help their teammates with. I mean, at the very least, these Rockos will be able to escape, but so much more damage has been dealt to Major Obvious and Unlucky. The only possible saving grace is the fact that Unlucky right now does not have access to this reclaim field. And that will be a lot of reclaim. I mean, right now, it looks like it'll be probably somewhere around... Oops, not you. Yeah, 1,500 metal. 1,500 metal, 1,000 metal already right inside of Major Obvious' territory. I'm a bit surprised Major Obvious isn't going there. They really need that reclaim if they want to be able to get themselves back into a fighting position. They're half the economy of Unlucky right now, and Unlucky is making sure that that gulf widens as best as they can, just making sure that all these expansions over the northeast are taken. Everything along the north side belongs to Unlucky right now, while Major Obvious struggling with getting as much as they can through static economy when they have all this reclaim right next to them. Oh, I see. Going by the chat, yeah, they were. I couldn't quite catch that because it was the high speed replay. But yeah, the whole Rocco versus Mace thing. I mean, that's zero K for you. The game is played around having basically units that counter other units. It sounds a little bit simplistic, but yes, like certain units or certain unit types do well against other unit types, and it's important to be very flexible with what you're building. Because otherwise you're going to end up in a situation like Major Obvious has, where they have a bunch of units that their opponent have gotten the counters for, and you don't have any way of dealing with that. You don't have a mixed enough army to actually be able to deal with these halberds. The Rockos are doing a reasonably fine job, but this is why I said halberds were a good idea, because of how much they can push in, provide support for the Penetrator as well, and just make those Rockos' lives super miserable. A little bit of a shame that this halberd's right now just deciding to stay here and take damage, rather than getting away, but yeah. That's still a thing. I mean, this is Unlucky playing very well. They're making sure that they have the armies needed to deal with whatever Major Obvious throws at them. Major Obvious, however, switching over to something that Unlucky is not prepared for, which is the Rapiers. I don't expect that's going to cause a huge amount of damage for the simple reason that they do fly fairly low to the ground. The daggers are in large enough numbers to stop them, and the mace is also going to be a problem. But they might be able to find some, some cheap shots. I mean, there's a lot of room around here. Like, this expansion is totally undefended. This expansion is totally undefended. Like the main base isn't very well defended. There's actually quite a lot here that could be very quickly taken down by a handful of well-placed rapiers. But, unfortunately, they have revealed themselves very, very soon. We don't see Unlucky countering that yet, but they are building an air factory. And that could be a problem. I'm a bit surprised we are seeing the rapiers used for defense. Unfortunately, like I said, Major Obvious switched entirely to rapiers. They don't have enough of an economy to be able to support both the rapiers and the cloaky factory, which means they can't really... I mean, they could reclaim that and actually make that economy happen, but they haven't done so. So they are a little stuck. I will grant them that. Bit of a shame there. But, that being said, they are still managing to defend. They aren't going to easily be able to go around the back and take out Unlucky's base. At least in theory. But Unlucky hasn't started building Swifts yet. I think they think that this might be a minor bluff. That Major Obvious is only getting some air units in order to get a bunch of ground units behind them. And then, once the anti-air is built up, rush in with ground units and wipe out the anti-air. But that's not happening. I mean, Major Obvious... They are going entirely for the Rapiers. And while Unlucky has now started to build some anti-air, that took them a little while to do. Still, though, the ground focus is, to me, the better option. The Rapiers are causing problems. But again, there's the Daggers. That's exactly what I was talking about. The Daggers can still do a lot of damage to the Rapiers. And there's enough of them. And they're way cheaper. Like, 80 versus 300. And yeah, sure. They get two-shot. Okay. But they're kind of weak units anyway. That's not a big deal. The big deal is that the Rapiers are not stopping the Halberds. They're not stopping the Daggers. They're not stopping the giant army from Unlucky, who has four times the economy of Major Obvious right now, from piling into Major Obvious's base and tearing apart everything. And nothing is stopping that. So, to me, I think Unlucky is doing exactly the right thing. They have a few Raptors being built up to make sure that the Rapiers cannot completely go on uncontested. But ultimately, this is going to be Major Obvious having a very difficult time, if an impossible time, getting themselves back in this game. They've managed to tear apart the ground forces, but they've lost almost everything in the process. They've lost their command. They've lost everything except for two conjurers, neither of which is reclaiming. And again, this is the thing I, I tend to harp on is reclaim, because right now Major Obvious has 1,500 metal free reclaim. 
I mean, it's going to be difficult to get their economy back online, but, you know, 1,500 metal free reclaim is still something. But unfortunately, they aren't taking advantage of that, and I'm really not entirely sure why. It's going to be a lot harder to keep these metal extractors secure, especially the 0.9 ones. Where that's nothing. Better option would be grab the reclaim. Also, rebuild these metal extractors as well, but grab the reclaim. At least with the reclaim, Major Obvious can still kind of stay in the game. It would be delaying the inevitable at this point. Unlucky is so far ahead economically, and all these rapiers are going down right next to the commander. That is reclaim for sure, and there is Major Obvious throwing the towel. Not able to keep up. Early on, they were made, they were re relatively even. Army value relatively even. Economy was relatively even. But at this point, yeah, it is turned around. And unlucky, they take the match with simply better macro play. And better unit choice. Overall, good thinking on their part. And I think that is going to be it for round one. I'm not entirely sure. Looks like that was it indeed. I mean, it's a little hard to tell because I've got a bunch of windows that are overlapping, so let's see. Yep, those last one. We're going to be moving on to round two. As Major Obvious, they are... They got to win. I mean, this is still Swiss, so of course, the way this works is that everyone gets wins in several rounds. It's four round Swiss, and then the top four move on to a bracket. And at this point, that's Major Obvious, 400, RAR, and FFC with a one-win advantage. And now we have Unlucky... Ooh, FFC 400, Unlucky RAR, Major Obvious, Melon Rouge, and Paul Below versus Orphelius. I'm kind of curious who Paul Bello is. But I really want to see Unlucky versus RAR. Because RAR, their style has changed recently. They're not quite as macro-oriented. I'm sorry, not quite as command-oriented. They're more macro-oriented now. But Unlucky has shown that they're quite adept at switching units when they need to. So I want to see how that plays off, because, like I said, it's just it's going to be interesting. Especially if RAR does decide to go a bit cheesy. This is best of one, so they could go in with... Yeah, before RAR gets mace rushed. They could go in with something a bit cheeky. I mean, again, it's it's something that you kind of have to be careful with, because it, they could go in with a commander. It is best of one. Cheese like that can work. However... It's also a bit tricky because going into the commander, that's all or nothing. Or kind of all or nothing. And RAR is used to it. RAR knows how to do that. But still, I'm not sure if, he's gonna, if they're going to go for that because RAR has a tendency to go in with more units now. A rider range of units. They'll occasionally build up the commander, but generally speaking, it's macro play from them. And that's been a recent development, but still a development that has helped them to become a very strong player. I'm just curious how that's going to work because, like I said, Unlucky's approach is... Kind of different. But also kind of... Kind of interesting. So let's be waiting on that to be built up. So in the meantime, I'm going to just take a very quick break as we set up round two. And then once that gets going, then we will get going. So stay tuned for that. Yep, I'll be back in a second. 